So right. speaking of subnets and VLANs, what are some of the subnets and VLANs that need to be available? Yeah, and so this is one of the areas where uh, somebody who's you know new to Cloud Foundation and they're coming in and they're going to start deploying Cloud Foundation, uh, they're going to come to this um, section within the Deployment Parameters Guide where it's going to be asking for uh, a number of VLANs and associated subnets. Um, and one of the first questions we'll always get is, hey, you know, do you really need five? And uh, the short answer is yes, you, you do. Um, and it's important to understand why we need those VLANs and associated subnets and what they're used for. In addition, it's important to understand which ones need to be routable versus which ones can use private IPs. So, you know, you think about it, um, you know, we're going to go in and instantiate a software defined data center, and it's going to layer on top of your existing physical data center and top of your existing physical network. And, uh, you know, we're going to need to start off by having our ESXi host and those ESXi hosts are going to need to be able to talk together. And there's going to be a vCenter server deployed. that's going to be able to talk to those hosts to build a cluster. We're going to create a VDS and all that's going to take place on what we call the management network. And then what is part of this, when we go in and we're going to set up like vMotion, we're going to need to set up a vMotion VM kernel interface. And so we're going to need to have another uh, VLAN associated with that. And then another VLAN associated with the vSAN. So remember, vSAN is required for the management domain. So you do need to have that for that, at least that first um, cluster that gets created. And so you, we're at three right now. We got the management, we got the vMotion, and we got the vSAN. And then you introduce um, the, the overlaying network that uh, comes with NSX. And we're going to have to have an overlay network for our host to communicate with. And so that's gonna be another VLAN. And then uh, another thing we did, and this is new in uh, Cloud Foundation 5.1, is we introduced um, some separation between the management VLAN for our host and the management VLAN for the VMs that run on those hosts. So we've actually introduced a second management VLAN called the VM management VLAN. So pretty creative in our naming style there. But so all your VMs, like, you know, the NSX managers, the SDDC manager, will talk on the management VM VLAN, and then all the hosts will talk on the management VLAN. And that's uh, something that came as a request to us from customers because they wanted to have that separation. And so those are the four VLANs I went through really quick. So just kind of recap on that. You've got a management VLAN, which your, your ESXi hosts are going to talk over. you got the, the VM management VLAN, which your VMs are going to talk on. you got the vMotion VLAN the vSAN, VLAN, and then you got your host overlay uh, VLAN. And then it, there's another VLAN that's uh, less, uh, that's not needed during the initial deployment of Cloud Foundation, but does come in the minute you want to deploy an NSX Edge cluster. And that is the Edge uh, TEP VLAN, and TEP is Tunnel end, Endpoint Protocol. And so that's another overlay network for the NSX Edge nodes. And so it's important that you have um, all these VLANs, you define them up front, that they're set on your physical network infrastructure, and that you uh, you have them in place uh, so that when you do the deployment, we can go in and we can assign those IP addresses. There's some IP address management that happens inside the SDC manager where we can array, uh, uh, reserve blocks of these IPs. Uh, from these different subnets and dynamically hand them out. So for example, if I'm going to deploy um, a four node cluster, that's four hosts are going to have four VM kernel interfaces. I'll pull an IP address from the vMotion VLAN for those VM kernel interfaces um, and manage them internally inside SDC Manager. So um, it's important that you have those five VLANs. And again, just kind of recap, we went through that pretty quick, but there's a management VLAN for the ESXi host. There's a VM VLAN for the VMs that run in that management domain. Then there's also a vMotion VLAN, which will have all the IP addresses associated with your vMotion network, the vSAN VLAN for the vSAN network, the host overlay network, and then the edge cluster, um, the edge transport node overlay network. Um, and so you'll need to have those values. They'll need to be defined inside your physical switch infrastructure as well. Wow, that is a lot of VLANs. And so yes. two of those need to be routable. What two were specifically routable again? Yeah, so the the uh, the management VLAN and the VM management VLAN will need to be routable um, because those are components within the SCDC that will need to talk out to uh, you know uh, other yeah. things on your corporate network. Right, but so like if a vSphere like, administrator wants to get to the vCenter, it needs to be routable so they can get to the right. vCenter. Exactly. Okay. You know, and things like vMotion and vSAN and the overlay networks, those are internal to the cluster. You know, I need to have 
host A talking to host B, talking, talking to host C to be able to exchange, um, you know, network traffic. Uh, but, you know, vMotion doesn't necessarily need to route out or, you know, vSAN doesn't need to route out or things like that. So, so yeah, the two of those um, will need to be routable. The others can use private IPs.